If you need emergency medical care, treatment in the U.S. is the gold standard. But when it comes to prevention and managing chronic disease, that's another story. We've got big problems. We're overfed and undernourished. We've not only supersized our fast food, but our waistlines as well. The U.S. spends more on prescription drugs than any other country. But in Japan, instead of popping a pill to treat the symptoms, they search for the underlying cause, and it's working. People in Japan live longer than we do. People in Japan weigh less than we do. For years, people in Japan have been drinking a very special water. It's called Kangen water, and now Kangen water is available here in the U.S. Prior to my life as a physician, I was uh, working on a doctorate in nutrition. I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in nutrition and completed my PhD coursework prior to starting medical school. So my background really began in nutrition. When I entered medical school, I was trained like most allopathic physicians that our job is to diagnose disease and to treat it with medication and surgery when necessary. And so I followed that model for the first few years of practice. I began to turn back towards uh, my nutritional training and, and trying to help them understand nutrition as well as exercise physiology and activity as a means of helping them improve their health and reverse some of the chronic diseases that I was seeing on a regular basis. Many uh, processes within our bodies produce free radicals. Free radicals are entities that have lost an electron. They are positively charged. They come from the breakdown of foods, from the breakdown of toxins, and they enter our bloodstream. These free radicals are potentially harmful to cells. They will attach themselves, for example, to the lining cell of an artery. And when they do, they will produce an injury. That injury will create a response in the body trying to heal it. Platelets will come from the blood and try to plug that injury. And in the process of making a clot, in the process of then bringing in scavenger cells to repair the damage, the blood vessel is damaged. That's one of the theories of atherogenesis. I've been here for over 20 years as a dentist, and prior to that I was a dental hygienist. When I worked as a dental hygienist, I um, got very interested in nutrition and the nutrition and how it relates to the teeth and how it relates to the person. I've been asking every patient, most of the patient comes every three years or so. So I observe every year carefully and I tell them your colon becoming very firm and tight and developing more pockets. So you have to change your diet, you know, to my uh, diet. Then they improve year by year. That's uh, at least like a two years, three years later, their colon becomes soft and pliable. Even you have a lot of pockets, diverticulosis, which can create thickening of uh, intestinal, you know, the muscular layers. See? So this diet can change your body situation. I tell my patients that we are one big biochemical reaction. Everything that's happening in our body is a, is a biochemical reaction. And for biochemical reactions to occur, we need a solvent. And the solvent in our bodies is water. So there's no question that the most important thing that we can do is hydrate our bodies. Acid reflux, as you know, is a huge problem in our country. People who are obese tend to have it because their stomach and their uh, gastroesophageal junction gets shoved up into the chest. Their uh, lower esophageal sphincter isn't tight. And the esophagus is squamous epithelium. It's a different lining from the stomach, and it doesn't tolerate acid. So when the valve that connects the stomach to the esophagus, that interconnection doesn't function, the acid suddenly starts bathing this lining of the esophagus in acid and it can't tolerate it. It's painful. People have that terrible sour taste in the back of their throat. When we treat chronic disease with, with medication and we don't really attack the root cause, which is oxidative stress, free radical damage, we're not really treating or curing the disease, we're managing the disease. Antioxidants, 
have become very, very popular because they are electron donors. And when they meet a free radical, that free radical gets what it wants. It gets its electron and it's neutralized. Now, the oxidation reduction potential of Kangen water is gigantic. It's about 30 times greater than the famous green tea. Everyone knows about green tea being a profoundly good antioxidant. Fruits, vegetables are considered antioxidants. Kangen water at a pH of 9.5 can have a negative, which is an electron donating reduction potential of up to 600 millivolts. It's measured in millivolts. You couldn't eat enough fruits and vegetables to get anywhere near that amount into your system. We rely on oxidative stress to kill bacteria and viruses and fungi, but oxidative stress in excess when we don't have the proper balance, when we have too much oxidation and not enough of its counterpart, which is reduction, um, then we get into the situation where we start to see degeneration occur in cells, in the tissues, and ultimately in the body. We, we get degeneration of the body, we get aging, and we get chronic disease. Oxidative stress is the mechanism by which all this happens. I find that drinking Kangen water is satisfying because it quenches one's thirst. One is able to uh, drink a lot more because you don't get that bloated feeling. It is as if the water is very much more quickly absorbed. Uh, and there are studies that have shown that from the Japanese literature that the water starts being absorbed in the distal esophagus before it even hits the stomach. It's absorbed in the stomach and then by the time the duodenal sweep has been reached, it's practically already totally absorbed. Oxidized water is a very, uh, I mean, unhealthy to me. So I don't drink that kind of water, but the, I drink alkalinized water. New York water, they say, the best water, but it still contains uh, the uh, chlorine. Why did they put the chlorine in? Because that the chlorine put into the water, that it creates uh, the uh, free radicals, and that that free radicals can kill the uh, bacteria. You know? So that the, actually, that the uh, chlorine in water is, there is no uh, bacteria besides. So it's a healthy water, they call. But for a health point of view, taking uh, this uh, chlorine-containing water is actually oxidized water. When I found out that the Kangen water machine makes seven types of water, I started exploring the high end, the 11.5, and the 2.5 end of that water. And on my exploration, found out that the 2.5 water is bactericidal and I am using it in my practice to help with bleeding. I use it to sanitize the mouth before I start working on the patients. The Japanese have done a tremendous amount of work on using ionized water for wound care. There's a lot published in the, the Japanese literature and also now in American literature about using pH 2.5 water for bactericidal purposes. Staph aureus, for example, cannot survive in 2.5 pH water. The kill ratios are dramatic for this. And so it stands to reason that this would be beneficial for contaminated wounds or even infected wounds. The Japanese, for example, treat diabetic uh, ulcers with ionized water with a low pH and find that to be extremely successful. They also have published a lot on it and the before and after pictures are very dramatic. The pH 2.5 water has tremendous uh, antibacterial properties against both gram-negative and gram-positive uh, organisms. With the standard American diet, it's actually very sad. I mean, that is what it stands for. Standard American diet is filled with sugars and the high energy drinks and even uh, the bottled waters, the potato chips and the pizza and the things that these children are getting in the vending machines, all of that is acidic. You think the skin is only young? No, artery is young too. Most of people who are eating a lot of beef, meat and a lot of oxidized waters, they tend to de develop more narrowing strictures. You know? And uh, many people, even in the 50s, they had uh, 
bypass procedure, the stent in all kind of problem in the artery. One of the things that you learn uh, is called primum non nocere. Above all, do no harm. That is the duty of a physician. It dates back to Hippocrates. None of us want to do harm. What we should do, and I think when we're convinced of something that is really truly good for people, we should go and recommend it to people. Anytime our body sees protein that it doesn't recognize, we have the susceptibility to cause an inflammatory reaction or an allergic reaction. I really do think there's a connection there with incompletely digested proteins through the typical American diet that we consume. Periodontal disease affects 75% of the population. And periodontal disease is a silent disease of the mouth. In other words, you don't really know you have it until it's too late. What I have found is that we do comprehensive cleanings on people to try to get their mouth healthy again. But we use as an adjunct the acidic water that we make here at the office with our Kanga machine. And we use it under the sulcus of all the teeth, in other words, around the teeth and the gums to clean bacteria during our procedures. And we also send the patient home with the water because I'm sure you've heard the eyes are the mirror to the soul while the mouth is the mirror to the rest of the body. Look at Japan. The country of Japan has the highest consumption of ionized water in the world. Now, I'm not saying it is necessarily a direct effect, but they are also number one in overall health care in the world and number one in longevity in the world. When we compare that to the United States, we're number 38 in longevity and in overall health. The Cubans have better health than we do. We need to respect the fact that we have all these built-in mechanisms to help us fight disease, to maintain our health, um, but we need to support ourselves in that healing process by eating natural foods, by drinking the right type of water, by managing stress, by getting plenty of exercise and you know, plenty of oxygen to our lungs. This is a very important, you just change your diet very little bit. Enjoy your the health, enjoy your longevity too. I think the number one most important thing is water. To drink a water, alkalized and ionized water which is a uh, Kangen water. I'm very excited that Kangen water is here to help both children and adults alike in my practice and my patients are loving it. I've had the great fortune in my life to have graduated from one of the finest medical schools in the world, Harvard. I was trained in the Harvard residency program. I've spent my entire professional career affiliated with that institution. One of the best things next to being affiliated with this great institution has been my discovery of Kangen water. For those of you who are trying to optimize your health and trying to do everything you can to have good health, to maintain your health, preserve your health, my plea is just to try the water. In Japan, they have a saying, Mizuo Kayareba, Jinsega Kawaru. Translated, change your water, change your life. Do yourself and your family a favor. Ask for a free sample of Kangen water. Try it and see for yourself.